classic VWs are what got me into this whole car world. And I've been fascinated with them ever since. This is my first car. You'll probably know that if you watch this channel regularly. My second vehicle was a VW, a transporter. So in this episode, I'm actually going to be meeting a family who, whose grandparents used to run a Volkswagen dealership. And they managed to hoard a few little things when they shut the dealership down because it was in their blood. They loved it. There's possibly more than one car of interest here as well, not to mention a, vi a building with a load of spares in it. So of course, this is a barn fine episode and this is The Late Break Show and I'm Johnny Smith. The, the, car we, the main car we've come to look at today, I believe is under there. That's right. I can see the rough shape of it. Yep. The creepy eye on the tarpaulin. <laughs> And that's a VW Type 2 pickup um, yep. bay window. Yep. But Dan got in contact with the Late Break Show when um, some cars that were here were going to auction, which I couldn't get to um, before they went. One was a delivery mileage, very late model um, Carmen Beetle uh, convertible. Yep. Which, which, if you watch my CCA auction previews, that got sold at auction end of last year, as did a 60s 911 that got left out in the back garden. It did. As a trade-in. And that car sold for really good money as well. Those two cars were part of this. Your, your late grandpa's. That's it. Great, uh, yeah. and, and grandma's kind of empire, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, the, the remnants of a main dealership. So, so they, they, they ran a main dealer yep. in the West Midlands. That's here. right. Yeah, in Warsaw uh, from early 60s through to the early 80s. Wow. Golden era. Yep, something like that. The VW. Yeah. Yep. So you grow up and your brother grew up yep. basically around mostly air-cooled Volkswagen. Pretty much, yeah. He was, he was an air-cooled man, was granddad. So he did, he did drift it into Mark on Golf and bits and pieces like that. But yeah, it was all, uh, all air-cooled was where his heart was. So. Yeah. And th this pickup here is quite significant because this was like the workhorse of yeah. the dealership. Was yeah, it? it was a service pickup. So they used that at the dealership. It was never signed written, which was a shame, but it was, it was, it was used as the, uh, as, the, as the pickup there. And then when they got rid of the, the garage, he, he kept it. It was his own vehicle for God knows how many years. And, um, and yeah, we used to roll around with it in him. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, this, so he, he obviously was quite attached to this Yes. beyond running down the dealership yeah 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 we, and we've used it to build houses to move house to pull cars to all sorts so yeah he did he, lo he loved it he did he really loved this van so first of all maybe if you take me for a tour because yeah because there is still a few yeah there's, there's still a few things other here. cars and some other parts there is so i've been clearing it for two years so far two years yeah and this is what we've still got left two so, years yeah there's five cars have already gone uh about six or seven engines gearboxes gone i've cut three trailers up it was it was rammed you couldn't have got in here so we've still got pickup um the type yeah. two yeah there's a boat under there that he built himself a, a boat boat speed boat um made of wood did, did, I, don't, I don't think it still makes speed boats out of wood but, did, but yeah he made that himself in the 50s uh, really yeah the 72412 under there wow this is interesting because that's an emreg bay window pickup yep. in the blue i had an emreg transporter van okay um in that color as my second car really yeah and then i swapped it for a 412. <laughs> well there we go you'd have a, gone with a it. long time ago he'd, the, he'd have liked you, you know, they late, thought you were all right so <laughs> and my 412 had been converted into a van weirdly okay oh well this is a fastback um, okay. Now again, this was his own car. He had it for years. Drove it round as the managing director of the dealership. Really? Even when he was told he got to swap it for a much newer um, Audi hundred, he hid it, he hid it from my nan, um, <laughs> and then brought it back out a few years later, so that he could keep it. And again, we used to go all over the place in it. My mum and dad didn't like it, so no seatbelts in the back. But um, so he, he never got rid of it. He should have got rid of it and never did. Should have got rid of it. Never got rid of it. Fifties um, Riley down in the corner, a little sports car that he built himself. Was an ice cream van. Was an ice cream van? Yeah, it was an ice cream van. So What an odd thing. Um, and so, then there's another, there's a big 1930s Humber under there. Show me, show me, show me. Oh yeah, 
Tell me, what's the story of this? So he rebuilt this in the 50s with his dad and did a couple he? of the guys at the garage before it was a VW dealership because they did they just sold cars in general before. Yeah. So And he took it to a few shows. It was my mum and dad's wedding car in the 70s. Was it? Uh, for, we bent his trailer bringing it here when they moved house in the 80s and it's, it's sat under here ever since. So this is where that Beetle was sat for... However long it's at here, 30, 40 years. The, 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 the delivery mileage. Yeah. The story goes, right, correct me if I'm wrong, that your grandpa knew that they were phasing out German yep. made Beatles yep. and loved them. Yeah. So thought, I've got to he order, order a couple. Yeah. Um, and then what happened? So he ordered a few and there was delivery problems and he ended up with three. Uh, he kept the bronze one and that just sat. Which was like a time to, capsule. Yeah, yep, sat here. Um, he gave one to my mum for her 21st birthday, which we've still got, a silver one with a black hood. And there was another one that got sold. He sat in the showroom for a while um, and sold. There were 79 Beatles, I think, sold in 81, 82. Uh, and I actually, I found the guy who owns that relatively recently on a forum. That's amazing. And I'm sorry, my eyes keep picking up on little parts. There's, there's VW and Audi bits everywhere. So to, just for clarity, this is not an old dealership. No. No, this is where they moved. This is an old pet shop. So after they had the dealership closed, they retired for a few years. I don't know if they got bored of each other or bored of, of whatever, but then my nan wanted a shop. So it was between a pet shop and a wool shop. She liked knitting, she liked animals, um, and they ended up buying a pet shop. And she ran it for 20 odd years till she died. Wow, so th th that's why it's a shop front. A shop front out there, yeah, which is now full of car parts, but was a pet shop. Granddad ran it until a couple of years before he died. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he carried on. I quite liked to chat to the people coming in and, and whatever. Um, and then, um, and then, yeah, he got he started to get a little bit ill and shut the shop, but carried on with the car stuff. And as I say, it's now full of uh, full of car parts. And there's there's remnants of the dealership, which we'll look look at later upstairs, like a brochures and yeah, banners, there's all sorts of stuff, VW related gifts. And obviously, you know, look, look, there's some great stuff. <laughs> Everywhere I look, look, lovely old radios, lovely old spotlights, blooming eight tracks. Stereo of the 70s, <laughs> absolutely. Just this is going to be great. So I brought a friend of mine with me called Tim. Um, if you remember my, my channel when it was Car Pervert in the early days, Tim used to appear in it now and again when we were doing mechanical stuff. But also I did a TV show with him years ago. Um, called Lazy Boy Garage, and Tim's a proper VW guru. So I brought him along to see if we can have any hope of getting that bay window pickup truck fired up today. Or even the 412, who knows? I'm not gonna make any promises because I hate making promises on this show. This is my friend Tim. Tim's an absolute Volkswagen guru. So, I've dra so I dragged you along in my Beetle this morning. Uh, yep. Very early. Very early. But the thing that interests me about this is you don't really see old VW Type 2s complete languishing in yards in the UK anymore. No. There's none in scrapyards and it hasn't been for decades. And all the ones that have ever been found um, have been restored or cut up for bits uh, or imported. The pickup's probably the one that is the least survived because they were used so hard. Yeah, they always work trucks, the builder trucks, so they always got abused, used and abused like they were supposed to and then thrown away. Better and early. Yeah. Apparently, um, the grandpa liked buying these big old like advertising tarpaulins from car boot sales because they were cheap. It's three, three layers. Oh, three, yeah. So I think we're told that the, we're told that the old bus is complete. I mean, obviously it's rotten. <laughs> Open the door. Go on then. It's not going to fall off, is it? No. It's full of cobwebs and blankets. Good cobwebs. Keys are in the ignition. Keys are in the ignition. Thing. Well, that's really good. We've been to a few barn finds where the keys don't exist. No, well. So let's, let's start moving some stuff around. We'll see if we can get some air in these tires. We'll get that trailer out of the way uh, and then uh, and reveal it in all of its crusty glory. Well, the pickup's uncovered. We've got the 1300 tarps off it. 
and it is dry it is dry the boys reckon that it might have been undercover here for more than 15 years some really cool like um handmade bows and a frame which clips on the the drop sides with this wooden part at the back here which is neat um there's a couple of engines in here and transmissions i think and windscreens it was an engine that he was going to transplant into it is that what that that is yeah was, i think it's two liter engine and gearbox that he's going to swap with the original 1600 so we'll try and get some air into the tires we don't think that one is going to survive because you know there's a gash in it <laughs> and we'll see if we can hunt around and find another tire and then we'll roll it this way and then take a closer look at it and have a look at the engine I've, um, I've just realised I thought this was my first Volkswagen barn find, but it's not. It's my second one. We dug out a, um, and again, a UK uh, VW oval window beetle from a lot of undergrowth in Wales. Watch that if you haven't watched it already. That was a fun day. So now that we've got it out and we can walk all the way around it, uh, I've had a little look underneath it and inside sort of the engine bay area. And all the nooks and crannies, chassis-wise, have been wax-oiled. And Dan so was saying that his grandpa wax-oiled the living daylights yeah. out of everything. So chassis legs and everything. Yeah, I've looked. It, the outside looks hanging. Much average, knackered, needs everything. Yeah. But then actually when you look underneath, it's not so bad. No. I think the, the tarpaulins were kind of down to here. So from here upwards isn't bad. Underneath's not too bad, but the exposed... The lower sides... <laughs> And the other side is actually worse, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. I have the key here. Go on then, show me, show me. Because I um, I forgot about it. This was for putting tools in, wasn't it? Is that right? Spare wheel, tools. Oh, there it is, there it is, a bit flappy. Oh yeah, there you go, it does hold. So this is where you would have put your tools and your bits and bobs. See that? I was going to say, look, that's not too bad. Down there is not great, outer sills, but that's actually the metal. Again, you can see where he's wax it and things. It's yeah. actually pretty good, isn't it? Actually, the, the bottom of the load bed looks really good as well, so that's not full of holes. See? Yeah, and dealer, dealer flaps as well. Yes. You were the one that said, look, it's got dealer mud flaps. Well, yeah, I don't know if they're dealer because they're white. I don't know if they ever did them. Well, hang on, he was a dealer. Yeah, but then... He was a main dealer. have come from uh, accessory rather than original. It'd be interesting to know. This is a bit of, you can see it's reflective number plate, but on the other side it's stamped services pickup with the reg number. How does it feel then, Dan, to see this thing again? It's a bit like being 10 years old again. I used to sit in that middle seat and change gear for him. Did so, you? Well, so we always used to have, me and my brother used to have an argument over who sat in which seat. So we were both, well, I'm four years older than Rich, so... I'd be 10, he'd be six, that sort of age. And we wanted to be grown-ups. We wanted to be in the outside seat. Yeah. But then the consolation prize was granddad to let you change gear for him when, uh, when you were going down. So we always used to change. We'd have to swap halfway. He'd pull over and we'd swap seats. But yeah, it was... So middle it seat is. got to shift gears. Yeah. But yeah, it is. It's been a long time since I've seen in this. It's actually, again, it's not... I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not not for, a work, for a working van, it's, it's not bad, dirty. is it? And I like his, I like his little add-ons, this sort of riveted aluminium yeah. tray under the back window and yeah, that'd these be, speakers his, either side. Yeah, he'd make his bits and pieces. His little thing for holding his notes, so he remembered to get whatever my nan had told him is to get. Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd stick, oh. he'd stick a notepad under it with uh, I know his those. instructions off my nan. Yeah. 
and this yeah. was he always used to stick apple stickers everywhere because he'd, he'd eat apples while he was driving he'd stick them all over the steering wheel all over the dashboard is that i've seen a few of them in yeah. in your workshop as well yeah that'll be him i'm just gonna hop in yeah jump in been ages since I've sat in one of these. And if you learned to change gear in one of these, <laughs> yeah. well, if, if, the, if, you, if you thought this was a normal gear shift, <laughs> yeah. these have the worst gear shift because yeah. the linkage is so long. Yeah. What's, uh, yeah, what's he, used that? To, he used to have that on the dashboard. He did. He had. A, he had a fairly good toilet sense of humour, did Grandad. So that had. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a cherub, uh, a cherub urinating into a pot. And he's put that shelf on, I think. Yeah, I, I think that was an addition. He's made that yeah. with a bit of pipe lagging and some a veneer. Sounds right. Like an old drawer. But, oh, look. The blanking panel for the radio. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing which is actually really rare now because they get thrown away when people fit radios, but not Grandpa Gem. No, I think there's a box full of them in the garage. Really? Right, so we know, according to Dan and, and Rich, that this pickup drove in here. Yes, around about the millennium time or the late 90s, which is quite a while ago now. It hasn't run since. It's obviously been stored under semi-dry conditions. Um, and from what we can see, anyway, what's, it, what's missing and will it, what will stop it from going? And it does look very complete, all the air filter um, hoses and everything are in there. So that's good for stopping moisture getting into the bores and stuff. So Look at these it's a good sign. So the first things first, we, we want to we want to be able to spin it over without any compression, right? As normal. Well, yeah. Just I'm literally going to get hold of this and just and see if it turns by yeah, hand. Yeah. And I'll put it in first a, gear and rock it a bit. And yeah, I mean, if it if it turns by hand, then that's great. If yeah. not, then we start to get into like, is it seized or is it just a bit tight on the balls or? Yeah. So let's have a look. See if it turns over. Oh, it does. That was quite easy, actually, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah I heard the, the, I heard the yeah, fan belt. Yeah, there was, like, there was like a bit of resistance for a... The fan belt unstuck. Yeah, I think it probably was the, the fan belt stuck on the uh, pulley through rust rather than anything else. But that's turning over. Imagine. At which point you wonder if there's any compression. and if the <laughs> I was going to say, is it, a bit, is it a bit too easy? Well, the problem is you can get valves stuck open. Yes. I mean, there's compression there. Yeah, so should, do you want to take the plugs out? Yeah, let's take one plug out for a start and see what that looks like. Yeah. And uh, take those two plugs out because these ones are really awkward to get to. Are they worse, are they, because of the air cleaner? Yeah. All right. So like that. Have you got some WD? I mean, you might. <sighs> I've got that. I've got that plugged in off. Um, I have in the. Um, I have in the Beetle. Do you want me to go and get? Just go and get it. Yeah. Put it on there. All right, you bastard. Oh, it's still not the front one though. No, the front one, I think I need to wiggle it or tap it. I've got it. How many, how many Type 2s have you had? Personally, I've probably imported at least 25. Wow. Bays and split. Gosh. Plugs are nice. Not... I might have to use that bit of that grease. Do you want some? Not at the moment, but when we put the plugs back in, I'll put a little, put a little bit around the uh, red. Cheeky little stash of grease. SO, of course. Oh, it's like a ring, oh. it's like a ring pull. It's oil, isn't it? Oh, is it oil? Yeah. Oh, it's like a can of Coke. Yeah. It's a paper as well. What, the actual? Yeah. Is it? Cardboard. It's the ones that have in like the forecourt and they'd just be like, the, ga the garage used to be an SO garage, yeah. didn't it? So that is an SO, like, you know, like a rip, rip top. It's obviously spare oil. Isn't it's it? like a pint, isn't it? I reckon yeah. that's a pint. Yeah, it's just... Still sealed? Yeah, yeah. still sealed, look. Sounds right. It's like a can of Fanta, but this will probably kill you. Yeah. Or Fanta might, I don't know. Eventually. You yeah. can tell by the, con the, the plug leads are really nice. Because repro plug leads are grim. Well, they certainly were. Yeah. Yeah, it's got Bosch plugs in it. Yeah, look at that. Bosch, Bosch actually made in Germany, Bosch. Oh, that's a ever limiting one. Yeah. The plugs are really tight. Yeah. I don't want to strip one out. Yeah, if we've got one out. Yeah. There's a decent amount of oil in it. Perfect so you want to just see if it turns on the key or? See if it turns over. See if it's got a spark when the plug's out. Yeah.
okay, so this is what we've done. One plug out, um, cleaned it up. It's got oil up to the maximum mark. And we're just gonna go to turn the engine over. We've cleaned up the distributor cap, rotor arm points. We'll see if we've got dash lights. Turn it over without a fuel supply. Hopefully, A, it won't be seized. B, we'll have a spark. And then we can look further. Plugs look in good condition of the plug that we've taken out. So for speediness, because we're sort of keen to see if it runs, but we're also keen to have a nose at the, the 412 over there. So, uh, and, and in the parts store. Okay, we've got, a, we've got a no charge light. The solenoid clicked, so that's good. And we've also got an 80s digital clock, which is flashing. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to try and turn it over then? Yeah. Can we? Yep. You ready? Yep. Right, hold on. Well, that turned over. It turned over and it sounded... Uh, like it sounded like it was, it was under compression. Yeah. Have you got a decent set of pliers? Yes. I think if we turn it over and see if we've got a spark. Okay. Yep. Okay. No. Do you want to put the ignition on? You want to put it on? Well, you're going to, you're going to flick open the points. Yeah. Ignition's on. Okay. Yeah, there's a spark there. There is? Yeah. Do you want to take the other plugs out? Or no. Do you... <laughs> 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 no. No, and this one was tight all the way coming out. Right, we've connected the fuel lines. Can of hopes. I've just put a new fuel um, pump on the can of hope. I have one in stock. Um, so we should be, when I turn this switch, we should be able to put some fresh fuel into the carb. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, and then I'm gonna go try it on the key. What do we reckon? Sweepstake time, everybody. Uh, well, granddad, I'll go yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'll go yeah. yeah, I'll go yeah. yeah, yeah. Come on. The spirit of Gem Garage. Ready? Yep. Right, jump pack. I want it to turn over quicker than that. Yeah, yeah it's a bit um, sluggish. We're running out of space on, uh, <laughs> on here. <laughs> this is not how you do it at home. Try number two. Okay. Oh, it's turned over better now. I think it was probably just a bit tight on the balls. Yeah, it is. It is going over quicker, isn't it? No, no attempt at firing yet, no, though. No, no. Uh... Have you, you haven't got another plug, have you? Uh, I have not got another plug. Do you think you've got a spark plug for? A... Yeah. It doesn't matter. Any, off anything. Oh, just to. Um... Oh, anything. Yeah, just to uh... see if we've got a spark. Just without having to take a oh. plug out. Okay. Yeah. Has he got a cap on it? I need a cap off. Go on then. Right. Didn't seem to have a spark now. Ignition's off. I can smell fuel. Yeah, that's because it's because I think it's not sparking, so it's... Yeah, that's the worry. Right, so while Tim is tinkering with the bay windows ignition system with Dan's brother Rich, I thought we'd come over here before we run out of daylight to uncover the VW412. A lesser known air called VW actually, um, it was a Type 4, as they called it, wasn't it? Yeah. Which was a progression of the Type 3, which basically meant it had a boot in the front and a boot in the back, engine was under the floor. It was never as popular as the, uh, as the buses or the Beatles, but this was probably the most sophisticated air cooled VW they made. Uh, a monocoque design and a rot box, unfortunately. Yep. Uh, but let's have a look, because this you said this was your grandpa, one of his favourite so, cars. Yeah, this was, he absolutely loved this. And again, he was told, drive something more modern, you own a garage, blah, 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 blah. But he just refused to, he just, refused, he just really loved driving it, I think. 
Look at that. Yeah, frilly wings. So yep. But you, I've seen some wings somewhere. There's about four sets of wings in there. There's is a there? fiberglass set. There's a couple of metal sets. Is so there? He, had, he found some guy who'd got a farm it was in Canterbury. It's about four hours from here. Yeah, that's but we, ca we came back with a car full of 412 bits. So, um, again, he never, he never got anywhere with it in the end, unfortunately. But So this was the car he was always meaning to kind of yep. Re rebuild? Yep. 1989. That sounds right. He stopped using this a fair while before that. Wow. I'm trying to think of, of uh, best to describe the VW Type 4. It was, um, I suppose it was trying to sort of become almost closer to Audi in terms of, in terms of sophistication and, and luxury. The inside was more plush than the other Volkswagens of its time. This is the fastback but four door and they did an estate version as well called the Variant. The back arches are obviously hanging and you said earlier actually Dan that your that, that Grandpa did not like the standard wheels. No, which so, is why it's got, so it's got they're on the Super Beetle or it's, GT. It's GT yeah. Beetle, I think, wheels. Yeah, this is one of the, probably the only air-cooled VW that isn't desirable. Yeah, yeah that it nobody really, wants. It really is. <laughs> yeah. And it is a bit ironic that he's put this under a lean-to, but that, that old 911. <laughs> Yep. was left left out yep. to rot outside. And this was pretty rotten when it came in. That yep. was, that you know, I mean, I know these are really bad now, but I mean, yep. you can see that was, that's why he started collecting bits because it was, it was bad when it came in, this was. Yeah. Well, I think that, I know where the keys are. I think that door is open. Though. Oh, is I'm it? sure it is. Bit jammed. I don't know whether it's just full of stuff, but it is, I'm sure it's open. Oh yeah, you're absolutely right. I've just managed, it was just the, um, the latch is seized. Yeah, this was called, so flat floor car, Nice kind of velour seats, wood wood grain dash, so a bit like a bit like an Audi of its time. You still got the 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 kind of Wolfsburg symbol on the horn push. There's lots of SO stuff because the the Gem Garage was an SO fuel station for many years, so you see lots of SO bits. <laughs> Yeah, so this was the business they had after the garage, which was, it was a pet shop. It was actually two different shops. Grandad knocked this wall down as well, to be fair. So, so, so basically right now, obviously this is not being lived in anymore. No. You've got car parts and yeah. sort of remnants of, of pet shop. Yeah, bit, there's pet shop bits, but there is, there's car parts. There's a few of my mum's bits in storage. There's some bits of my mum's car, as it happens, that so, she doesn't drive anymore. So this um, here, this is... This is Carmen Beetle. So that's the other Beetle to the bronze one. Um, the one that that's you've the had from one, so your family's had from new. Yeah. Um, wow. This is is that the number plate? Yeah. FFF two. Yeah. Brilliant. So he had a, a car came in the garage, I think, smashed up, bought it off him, and put it on Mom's car. Wow. Um, so this is one of the very last German ones that you were talking about. Yeah. So this car you've still got. Yeah, we've still got that. It's um, in parts halfway through a respray. So you, that's going to go back on the. That'll road. go back on the road. Yeah. Um, wow. Industrial sewing machine he bought because he convinced himself he was going to be able to sew well <laughs> enough to make a new hood for the Humber. What? That was why he bought it. So he dragged me. That was up five flights of stairs in one of those big Georgian terraced houses. No way. He dragged, he said, I've gone to buy a sewing machine. Will you come get it with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to carry it. It weighs a ton. I had to carry it down five flights of stairs <laughs> with him. By the way, if this looks a little bit most haunted because we've got no lights on and we're <laughs> yeah. just going with torches, it's because the, they don't trust the fuse box in here. Yeah, we've turned so, the electrics off downstairs. Oh, I see some Volkswagen boxes. Yes, so these look at these look from the garage. Um, so these are VW tools. Yep, bits for the Humber, all sorts down there. Turbo, turbo boost, testing gauge, and then we've got some very old wheels. Yep, I think they're spares for the Humber. Right. Okay. Uh, and then and then over here and then this is back to vw stuff I this think. is all yeah so you've like say type 25 got boxes of coils 412 yeah. bit 412 bumpers ah 412 bits brake lines windscreen rubbers yeah so you still have you still have some new old stock stuff mm, points and do with them oh my yeah. gosh could have done could yep. do with them in a minute with, this, yep. with the vw van um yeah and just again just stuff everywhere Okay, so this is very air-cooled here. Yes, so this should be mainly, he bought these ready to go on that. 
because I don't know whether you spotted in amongst all the primer, but they don't actually match the ones that are on. So oh, I didn't. No, I didn't. So these are the these are the fold down sides yeah, for so the bay window. The original ones were rotten. He chucked some on that he found from somewhere. The white ones that are on it. And then he got really excited when we found these. Is that an engine and lid? And an engine lid. Because I think that's different to the campers. I think it's a very slightly different size to the campers, if I remember rightly, from stuff he said. Right, okay. Um, Again, different dashes. Yeah, because there's been at least two here that he's broke up over over time. The one with the two-litre engine and, yeah. a, and a van that he had for some bits. Um, I like the fact there's just a mismatch of... Yep. One, one minute there's a load of starter motors yep. and it says... Sunflower, sunflower seeds, seed, cocktail food, and then that's cocktail <laughs> yeah. food, but it's yeah. not at all. It's... No, it used to be. And there's some blow punk radios. Oh, you and your brother have spent over We've been ten years thinning this out. At uh, two years, yeah. Two, since 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 Grandad died, we've been sorting the bits just to, as I say, just to even try and make sense of what's here. Um, and two years of sorting to get to this stage. Yeah. Goodness me. So we're upstairs in your uh, your grand and grandpa's old old place. Yep. Downstairs is all the sort of tools yeah. and the bits, but there's still, there's there's like... Even mem- more garage we stuff. We are surrounded by memorabilia yep. from, well, the, the, what was the dealership. Yep. Yeah, so I think that's, that's supposedly a photo of their first VW delivery. Because there were a garage before they did servicing and, and, and general stuff on, on anything. But um, yeah, I think that was their first delivery, sort of a early to mid-60s. Of, yeah, a truckload of VWs, Type 2s, Beatles. Wow. This thing you were telling me about, this thing is crazy. This is like early days of the configurator. Show me if I'm doing it so right. So I think you've got to pick your car first, which car you're going with. Let's do the K70, because you told me that the K70 was, there was a launch of it. There was a lot, yeah, there's some, yeah, there's some footage of it somewhere. Um, of, um, of that, I think my mom's about 12 in it. So yeah, you pick your car, you pick your color. Do you like that one, sir? You're gonna buy one now, we'll try. That look at and that. Yeah. So they're <laughs> all like cool, acid, they're acetate yeah. outlines of the different VWs. Yep. That's so cool. There's stacks everywhere I look. Look at that. The Audi Coupe brochure. Oh my gosh. Oh. It goes on and on and on. Oh my gosh, it's stuff everywhere. This is to certify that James Edward Molyneux of Gem Motor Services has successfully completed the Volkswagen service course. Look at the embossed um, Wolfsburg image there. When did he get this, this course? February yeah, 65. One. Yeah. There's a there's a promotional po- poster over here, which is, is quite on PC. I actually forgot that they did this. Look. So they, I guess they, uh, they sold it in Japan. I, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Blimenac. It's like a proper cardboard cutout. And you've got posters, like big promo posters and things. Yeah. Incredible things. Wow. He didn't like to throw stuff away, as you no, can No, no, he didn't like to throw stuff, which is why you're still sorting through it all. Yep. Got MOT um, plaques over there telling you how, how much yep. is MOT in 1983? Five pound forty. Bloody hell! Oh no, mo- that's a motorbike. Nine pound. Right. And get get this, get this, viewers. Look, promotional material from Herbie, which you would sell in the dealership or give away. Sticker kits. Is that what the one? Yeah, of I these think that's. Is? Yeah, I think they are. Look. Stuff to keep the kids occupied, and hopefully, mum and dad will buy a VW. <laughs> It's basically it's the though, idea, it? I guess. Yeah. Volkswagen. Every everyone needs one. Everyone needs every every Corporate VW tie. enthusiast. Yeah, a VW tie, and a bag of tie pins over there. True. I saw that as well. Yeah. Keep yourself tidy. Brilliant. Bit of promo. Got to be oil crisis era promo. The dealership. You see all the different eras of the dealership, which yeah. I like. Like you say, the different launches that will have gone on. The light's falling out of the sky. <laughs> Meanwhile, you have got a stronger spark, haven't you? By yes. putting, a, putting a different battery in, connecting And got it, it turning over faster with a yeah, massive Chuck. battery wedged in there. Yeah. Fuel supply is ready to rock and roll. Different um, rotor arm. I just New happened points. to, yeah, I happened to carry some points in my Beetle, even though I don't have points in it. Long story. <laughs> I've had a spare distributor in it. But anyway, so 
we think we might get it to splutter this time. Okay. Well, it's definitely better than what it was, isn't it? Yes. It's trying to fire now. I don't know why there was... It's hissing. Well, there was something... And I can smell fuel. Yeah, it was sort of firing out the side here. What? It was like something was firing out of here. I don't know how. What? Uh, from where. It's got all the plugs in, hasn't it? Yeah. And the fuel pipe is connected okay to the side of the carb. Yep. I don't, um, we don't want to overfuel it. That's always my, my, my worry. It's hard to strike that balance, really. But yeah, it was firing. Good. Well, that's better than what it, what it was, definitely, because it was very sluggish before. Yeah, it's turning over better when it's firing. So. Yeah. Do you want to go again? Uh, yes. Shall we? Yep. Come on. Oh! Come on. Oh my oh. gosh. So close. Hold on a second. I don't know if this, there's something open here. Is it that pipe there? Is it hissing out of that? I think it might be a big split in this uh, it bellows. Be the, um... Yeah, between the inlets. And I can't feel any actual holes in there. It's hissing like hell out of there. Oh, maybe. There is. Yeah. Right. Um, I've got gaffer tape. Yeah, you won't get it. But it won't get it to stick if it's oily rubber. All I've done is undone the uh, the clamp for the distributor so I can turn it. Yep. Because it looks like it's slightly out, but it's very hard to see because it's actually in the wrong place. And it's hard to see if it's completely lined up, but I don't want to turn it until we've tried again. You don't want to re-time it until you know? No. So you want me to turn the engine over while yep. you've got the, yep. the clamp slack? Yep. Um, in fact, hold on. Because we were starting to think that maybe the timing is whacked out, even though you haven't adjusted it at all since it was parked. We have changed the cap. We have changed the rotor arm. We have changed the points. Yep. And we have taken the leads on and off, or have we? Yes, the lead, uh, yeah, all the leads have been off. And they're all definitely in the right place, Tim. Yep. Just asking, just checking, you know. Go on. Yeah, there's actually sparks coming out of that. What? Um, like burning embers coming out of that inlet. What? I've never heard of this. What do you think we should do then? Wrap a bandage? Not, it's not an electrical spark, it's like a burning... To, to, yeah. do, do, do we wrap a bandage around it or something? Do you know what? We still don't exactly know what's wrong with that bus engine, but it does need rebuilding, we know that anyway. And 24 hours after the shoot, Tim said to me on a message, I reckon the inlet valve must be stuck open. It must be, which is making it come back up, and shooting back out once as ignit and blown out that inlet manifold rubber. And that's what we think is the issue with this little bus. It's at this point in barn finds where it gets dark and you think, how far do you chase this? Every, the battery's running out of the battery. Well, we're running out of lots of batteries. Um, so um, this is where I think, because we don't have the actual parts and we have run out of time, really, we're going to have to just say, I'm afraid. I really thought we were going to get this pickup running today and, it, and I'm gutted, I'm gutted to, to throw the towel in. But I think we're going to have to throw the towel in. However, it's been a really lovely day to see this and hear all the amazing stories, the sentimental stories about this pickup. And I'm so glad that you guys are going to kind of resurrect it and bring it back to glory. And it's so good to see a, a VW Type 4 again for the first time in ages. And it's so good to see all those, all those archive photos and video of um, Gem, Gem yep. the Volkswagen dealership. Yep. Our pleasure. This is very, very cool. So what I hope is if you do, by some coincidence, get this running in the next couple of weeks, can you let me know? <laughs> Send me a video. Yeah, but, put a set of pair of bellows on and a pair of... Uh... Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, thank you for watching this Barn Fine episode of The Late Break Show. If you have a car, a vehicle that you think is of interest that you want me to come and dig out, 
uh, and try and fire up. I mean, I don't always get them fired up, as you well know. Let me know uh, in the description, there's an email address. Send us an email with the pictures and details and backstory. That would be great. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, I would love you to subscribe. And I want to say thanks to Rich and Dan and my friend Tim, even though Tim failed to get this flat four fired up. Hang your one head. One job, just one job. Just you stay down there. <laughs> you stay down there. <laughs>